Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and it's been a couple of months since I did a video on uh, sort of firmware updates and new features in Sonoff or the NS Panel Pro. I think that was like a summary video with some you know promotional codes and things you know new things here and there which included the NS Panel Pro. But on March 15 there is going to be a new firmware version released to the NS Panel Pro which is going to be like 3.0.0 and as you can see well and as you can guess from the big you know, change in the major firmware, this is going to be a big upgrade to the uh, NS Panel Pro. I think it is more like a technical upgrade uh, because they seem to be changing some of the underlying layers, what they use uh, in order to you know, generate the NS Panel Pro firmware. So at the moment we are getting a bunch of new features, uh, but these are like it's more like customize, uh, customizability and ease of use features which are important and I'm guessing you know in this underlying technology there would be some further changes coming along in the coming months. So if I want to summarize uh, the new features uh, the reason I'm not touching is because one of the new features is a screensaver that you can see here. By the way this uh, sort of this ring is a reflection from the ring light which I cannot get rid of. So anyway, so the first one is the uh, screensaver feature. So it uh, uh, mimics some, you know, flip clock. And then the, uh, the screen has changed. So there is like a new screen layout that you can change. And also there is some changes how you can mix uh, various devices and also scenes into like a single screen. So again, it just makes much more sense uh, how you can use it. And also you can customize the main screen. So as you can see, I have the camera icon here and I have a device icon and also I have a manual scene. So I could get rid of, for example, the security feature button, which I'm not using in the NS Panel Pro, uh, which was taking up some, you know, real estate on the main screen. I would rather have a device or a scene to be executed from here. So I don't have to swipe left and right to get to any of the other scenes. So I think these are like really meaningful features. And they also added the reminder functionality, which for me, it feels a little bit basic at the moment, but again, probably this is going to be enhanced in the future with some additional functions, or maybe that's going to be very useful with some integration. So maybe you can set up a scene which creates a reminder that pops up on the NS Panel Pro. So those are going to be interesting uh, things that may come in the future. So first of all, let me show you the new firmware. I cannot really get the lighting good enough so you can see the whole screen. Um, but uh, I mean, it, it feels a little bit washed, but you know, in real life, it looks much better. So first of all, I wanted to get to the settings. So if I go into the settings and if I go down to the about, then you can see that the latest version is 3.0.0. So I've received this uh, update, but uh, this is going to be released on the 15th of March. So that's going to be available at that point on the upgrade. And then maybe since we are in the settings, I can go into the display and I can just show you this new screensaver functionality. So that's the, uh, uh, that's where you know it shows the the date and this sort of like a flip clock animation so the screen doesn't uh, you know go dark completely but it just changes to this screensaver so it's really up to you whether you want to use this i mean i have a lot of clocks in the same place where i have my ns panel so probably i'm going to turn it off but um, that's a nice feature to keep the screen alive i did not notice that this clock would move so i don't know how what impact it would have on the on the you know the uh, the display in it long term if it can cause some burnout or burn in I'm not really sure okay so th this is the um, uh, that was just a screensaver to get it off quickly so the next thing I want to talk about is that the new UI so when you look at the screen you can see that the screen has changed we got these new buttons which are sort of like transparent buttons and if I scroll to the left or the right you can see that that has changed as well because now the background image is showing through these various buttons so there is a new cubic firmware and you could see that when the device boots up that it has a different logos so that's probably the new engine which is running uh, behind the scenes and that's rendering the new uh, screens uh, so that has upgraded all of the screens just to have uh, the this new you know nice background as you can see all the buttons are like uh, just sort of like faded back uh, faded buttons where the background shows through and the font has changed so they are now using some uh, Arial type fonts. I think those are easier to read 
and uh, yeah so general update to the user interface and you can see that these go through all the different screens as well so all of them has been updated and then changed to use this new look and feel uh, but the main functionality has not changed so obviously now the big thing, well, the big thing that I, oops, I particularly like on the main screen, that the main screen is customizable. And now let me just jump back to the, um, uh, the EVLink app. And that has been upgraded as well. So I got this new version, which is 5.4. That would be released at the same time when the firmware comes out. And uh, well, nothing really has changed on the main screen. It's really just... Uh, to support the additional functionality of the NS Panel Pro. So if I go to the NS Panel Pro, you can see that I have a couple of new options. So theme, extended screen settings, and the reminders. So let me just go through the, uh, let me just, you know, cover the theme first, because that's the, that's the main screen that we, that we are on at the moment. So the change here is that you can now customize the layout and there are a preset, you know, you had the classic layout, which you can see up here. So that had the camera and the alarm and, and the video calls. That was the other one. Um, and now you can customize the layout and you can choose from these predefined layouts here. So you click on edit and then you choose one of the layouts. I just gone for this uh, simple one, which has three buttons. And uh, so that, that's how I configured it, but you can go to edit mode and then you can configure each of the screens. So if I click here, I can select which you know, device I want to show. So I can place any of my devices here on the main screen. So again, uh, if you have a device that you're controlling for the NS Panel Pro a lot, then you can do that. Again, if you have, or for example, if you have an NS Panel Pro dedicated to a room, then you can put the devices in that room in, uh, into the main screen. So you can just access them easily. And you can see that I can pick pretty much any of my devices and uh, I can also pick, um, you know, the cast screen and whatnot. You know, I can do cameras. So then it shows the, the camera button. Uh, but I can also add any of my manual scenes. So that's what you can see on the right button or, um, you know, thermostats or device consumption. That's basically just shortcuts to a different screen. And under more, you have, uh, yeah, I've enabled that I wanted to add a camera. This is where you can add uh, the, you know, the voice call and the smart security feature and the weather and the time is, uh, and the time is uh, enabled uh, by default. So you can customize it quite a lot. If you pick a layout which has more buttons and then fewer screens, uh, for example, you can, you know, maybe you, you don't want to see the clock because you have a clock in the room. So you can turn off the time. You can just only have weather. So you would just have a short, uh, sorry, just a, you know, small weather icon. Um, and then, you know, a lot of other space for the, uh, for the buttons. So there is a lot that you can do here. And, and again, you know, if you choose any of the other layouts, you even have more space for, you know, some of these buttons. And as you can see, uh, you know, if I choose the camera, it still shows me the, you know, the different camera functions. So if I go to street and it's going to load my street camera, I also notice this new button so you can change the aspect ratio. Um, and sorry, just, uh, yeah. And uh, I can operate something from here. So like a switch but uh, I can also go into the main settings and I can see, you know, for example, this one shows power consumption and everything else. Uh, and I can also run a scene. So now I just executed one of my scenes. So obviously these buttons are live buttons, just like on the main screen, uh, sorry, just like on the device screen. Okay. And I can go, oh yeah. And by the way, you can't really see that, but I have a lot of other devices here that are not plugged in at the moment. And this is why they are showing like, uh, you can see some of them here, so disabled. But yeah, I have some other uh, buttons. So nothing has really changed here. I mean, these details screen are pretty much the same. Uh, probably the only difference is that uh, the, the font is different. But this here, for example, the temperature sensors draws a graph and uh, you know, whatnot. And yeah, I have mostly, you know, Zigbee stuff here. Yeah. So the functionality here not changed. It's, it, that part is more like a, U, uh, sorry, a look and feel change. Let me just go back. 
Okay, so that's the main screen. Uh, actually, I do really like how the uh, main screen is customizable. I think when I did my first review of the NS Panel Pro, that was the first thing that I noticed that, you know, the, the camera and the security is nice, but if I'm not really using one of them or both of them, then it just taking up space, which I will never use. So at least now it's customizable. So the next thing is the extended screen settings which is very similar to what we had before. So we still, you know, we can decide what, uh, you know, screens to use. And we have basically web pages, we have the main screen, and we have a device screen and the scenes, the manual scenes, the thermostats and the power consumption. And the real change here is that EVLink basically combined the device screen and the scene screen. And if you go into the settings, now you can see that I still have a device screen and the scene screen. So these are sort of like, you know, legacy stuff from the previous version. But um, if you remember previously in, in this sort of lower section, we had additional device screens and additional scene screens. So now they have been combined into this extended screen. So if I, for example, if I have this device screen, um, sorry, device screen and if I want to edit this now what you can see is that I have a list of devices that I can add to this screen this is why I have so much uh, you know empty space because most of these devices are not plugged in at the moment but I can also when I want to add new stuff I'm not uh, not only that I can add uh, devices but I can also add scenes uh, which again, it, it makes more sense because uh, if you have multiples of these screens, uh, let's say maybe you group your devices uh, based on rooms. So you have one NS panel and then you have a screen, like a device screen for, you know, a living room and a bedroom. Now you can, you know, group the devices and the scenes related to that room into the same screen. So you don't need a separate, you know, screens for devices and a separate one for scenes. It just makes it a little bit more compact. It's much easier to organize and um, yeah, I think it just makes more sense. So you can, I mean, for example, I'm not really using the scenes, so I could probably combine them and, and bring them over to the devices so I have one less screen or, you know, just, um, group the items in a separate way. So that's the, that's the basically the change around these sort of extended scene settings, which again is just a combination of scenes and devices. And the, finally, the last one is the reminder. And as I said, this is the one which I don't think it's um, that powerful at the moment. What you have here is uh, you have it says a reminder, it doesn't say reminders because it's basically one reminder. And all it does is that you can send the reminder from the evening application on your phone to the NS Panel Pro. So what I can do here is I can edit the, um, this message. Uh, I can have, you know, multiple lines here. So I can do like test or something. And uh, if I save that, then it just goes, uh, well, I can, uh, say whether I want this to update only. So in the settings, there is a section for the reminders. I think probably this is the least uh, useful, but I can also say that I want this to be a push notification. And if I confirm, then you'll see that I have a push notification for a new reminder. And if I select it, then I get this reminder. Okay, good. And I think actually, uh, if you pick something which is a very short text, then it might just uh, show the text on the on the top of the screen, but I'm not really sure. No, it just says my uh, new reminder. And actually, um, if you want to send this reminder in, in the future, you can just come to this screen and you can just, you know, click push notification again and it shows a, you know, a new reminder. And uh, if you click on high priority, then it just displays the reminder on full screen. So I can certainly see uses of these. Um, let's say you have like a bigger house and instead of shouting upstairs for the kids to come because the dinner is ready and if they have an NS Panel Pro in the room or in, on their desk, then you can send a reminder and it just pops up on full screen. So for these type of applications, what I'm really missing is um, it doesn't come with a sound. So I think that would be useful to also attach some sort of reminder sound. 
and of course when I was thinking about reminders I thought that maybe some time or reoccurrence is going to be associated with that but as you can see just a simple text and you have the option to show it as a reminder or show it as a you know full screen so it yeah serves this reminder function and I'm assuming that you know this functionality will also be included in in the you know the API functions so maybe with third-party integrations you can uh, automatically create these reminders and then you know push them to your NS panel pro so maybe you know something similar that you would do in um, um, maybe you can even would be able to send a push notification on, from an iHost or maybe it will be included in uh, in the scenes as well actually this is something that I haven't checked so let's just create a manual scene tap to perform and then smart sorry not smart devices to be honest I don't think it will be added but probably this is going to be the next thing that will get added at some point so yeah so security mode beeps choose so there is no um, uh, well no reminders at the moment but I would assume that it would make sense to you know just have another section here to uh, create a reminder and also I can create a beep here so with a scene I would be able to create a reminder and also an audio alert uh, which I think it's going to be more useful than just a simple text reminder but you can still you know use this reminder as um, you know just a reminder thing it's uh, you know maybe you can push this and it shows up on the main screen and then you know next time you visit your NS Panel Pro that's going to be there and then sort of you close it and you acknowledge it and uh, well then it's going to go away so actually these are the new versions of the NS Panel uh, firmware version 3.0.0 which as I said is going to be released on the 15th of March so when that comes and uh, when the video is released just uh, you know look for in the settings when you see the new update and of course don't forget to update your iOS or Android application as well to get these additional screens that I was showing in this video so I think that will be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.